Why do I need to sleep? During sleep, your body systems don't work as hard as when you're awake. Your skeletal muscles relax and need less oxygen, so your breathing and heartbeat can slow down. Other functions like digestion slow down, too. During one stage of sleep when you dream your muscles are even temporarily paralyzed. As your body uses less energy to run itself. It can use more energy for other important things, like growth and repair. In fact, a body chemical known as growth hormone. Which is responsible for how big you will become, is produced mostly during sleep. Scientists have found that children who do not get proper sleep. Over long periods of time do not grow nearly as much as they should. So even though you don't feel like going to bed sometimes, do it for your body's sake. It will thank you in the morning, when you awake rested, repaired and even a little bit bigger. Why do I poop? The food that you eat which provides the energy that your body needs to keep running and the materials. Needed for growth and repairs goes through an amazing process once you put it into your mouth. First you chew it into smaller pieces with your teeth. These small pieces are softened by a watery liquid made by your mouths. Salivary glands and molded by your tongue into a soggy ball for swallowing. The chewed up food then begins a journey through a series of connecting tubes. Mushy food travels down your throat and esophagus into your stomach. Powerful muscles in the stomach wall crush it even further and along with strong digestive chemicals made there turn it into a thick soup. Then it goes to your small intestines, where its nutrients pass through thin. Walls into your bloodstream and are delivered to cells throughout your body. Following that, the leftovers of your food what your body can't use or digest travel to your large intestines. Along with other waste products of the digestive process. Their moisture is removed and returned to your body, and what remains of your food becomes solid waste. This waste is stored in a large tube called the rectum. When the rectum gets full of solid waste, or feces, you get rid of it with a bowel movement through a small opening in your bottom called the anus. Your food makes the entire journey through your digestive system in about 24 hours. Though it could pass through faster or slower than that, depending on the kind of food you've eaten. While you may think that the indigestible part of your food what becomes poop is useless. It is actually very necessary. The unused portion of food, called fiber, makes the entire digestive system run smoothly. It gives the special muscles of the digestive tract which move food. Along in traveling waves known as peristalsis something to grip onto. What is bioluminescence? Bioluminescence is the ability of some organisms, 
like fireflies, to light up. This phenomenon occurs in some protozoa, fungi, ocean-dwelling invertebrates. Such as some species of shrimp and squid, and even some fish, anglerfish and hatchetfish. It does not occur in more highly developed animals like birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. The light results from a chemical reaction. And scientists believe it serves a variety of functions in animals. Sometimes animals use their light to confuse or scare their enemies. And sometimes it is used to attract a mate. For some deep sea creatures, their body light may help them see in an otherwise completely dark environment. How does my body know to wake up when morning comes? Parts in the center of your brain, the thalamus and hypothalamus, control your body's sleep-wake cycle. These parts act like an internal alarm clock. Sunlight is what sets the alarm off and keeps your body on a 24-hour schedule. Like Earth, resetting your internal clock every day. If you didn't have to follow a busy schedule that sometimes required you to get up before sunrise. And if there were no artificial lights at night to extend your day past sunset. Your body clock would follow the cycle of the sun even more closely than it does now. What is mimicry? Mimicry is the ability some animals have to resemble another animal. So closely that they can fool either their prey or their predators. For example, the beautiful and brightly colored monarch butterfly has a foul taste. And most birds will avoid eating it. The viceroy butterfly, with its similarly colored orange and black wings, looks so much like the monarch that most birds are fooled and will also avoid the viceroy. The American zone tailed hawk has similar color and body shape to that of a certain kind of vulture. Vultures do not attack live animals. They eat only carrion, which is the flesh of animals that are already dead, so small animals on the ground are not afraid of them. The zone-tailed hawk flies in groups with these vultures, disguising itself among them, and then swoops down on unsuspecting rodents that didn't recognize the hawk in time to scurry away. The red milk snake which is harmless, has color patterns similar to the deadly coral snake. A potential enemy could easily mistake the milk snake for the coral snake and thinking it is venomous, leave it alone. What is a booger? The mucous membrane that lines your nose is moist and sticky. That environment helps trap dust and other things in the air before they can pass into your lungs. When moisture evaporates from the thick film of mucus that covers the lining of your nose which happens all the time as air passes over it the mucus. Combining with the particles you've breathed in, 
becomes dried and crusty, forming boogers. What does it mean when an animal is extinct? Extinction happens when a species of plant or animal dies out completely. Extinction is a permanent state, once a species is extinct, it cannot be revived. Scientists believe that extinction usually occurs when a species cannot adapt to major changes to its environment. Some species adapt dramatically to such changes, and in doing so they become an entirely new species. Meaning the species they evolved from becomes extinct. The actions of human beings have caused numerous extinctions. At one time many people believed that Earth's resources fresh water, trees, fuel sources, animals used for food were unlimited. People have hunted or fished for an animal in such great numbers that the deaths outnumbered births. And the species could not survive. Tearing down forests or filling in swamps to build homes, golf courses. Or shopping malls has had a great impact on animal life, many animals can no longer survive if their habitat is destroyed. Pollution of the air, soil, and water has also been a factor in the destruction of many species. It's important to remember that while human beings have caused the extinction of many species, we also have the ability to protect and save endangered plants and animals. Wildlife preservation laws and organizations like the Sierra Club first arose in the late 1800s. After people began to realize the devastating impact their actions could have on animal species. Widespread hunting of the American bison, for example. Reduced the animal's population from 60 million in 1860 to only about 550 just 30 years later. Such a huge and fast reduction in the bison's numbers alarmed many people. In 1966 the U.S. Congress passed the important Endangered Species Protection Act, which meant that animals whose populations were shrinking could be protected from hunters and land developers. That law, and many others passed since then, has generated controversy in situations where the building of a bridge or dam or airport could threaten an endangered species but would help the people living nearby. As the world's population continues to grow, with more and more people living in what used to be animal habitats, such conflicts are likely to increase. Of all the animal and plant species that have ever lived, far more than half are now extinct. On the other hand, new species develop and are discovered all the time. So a balance between death and new life is maintained. Why do some kids occasionally wet the bed in their sleep? Usually, when you are asleep and your full bladder sends a message to your brain that it needs to be emptied. Your brain wakes you up so that you can go to the bathroom. But once in a while you sleep through the message and wet the bed. Bedwetting is a common occurrence in children up to about 5 years of age. Because muscle control and nervous systems are still immature then. 
but older children can have the condition, too called in uresis and doctors really don't know why. A lot more boys than girls experience bedwetting when they are older, and it seems to run in families. While challenging to deal with, the condition nearly always goes away by itself before adolescence. If a thorough check by a doctor reveals that no physical abnormality is the cause, a child can do a couple of things to limit bedwetting, drink only small amounts of liquids in the evening, and set an alarm clock to wake up during the night and empty the bladder so that an accident will not occur. What is the purpose of dreaming? While scientists aren't sure, they know that people who are prevented from dreaming people whose sleep is interrupted become crabby, slow thinking, and clumsy. So it is clear that dreams are needed to keep the brain healthy for some of its complex functions. Like memory and concentration. Many psychologists and psychiatrists, professionals who study mental and emotional behavior, believe that dreams provide us with ways of working through fears and anxieties. These professionals often analyze their patients' dreams to figure out what might be troubling them. Our dreams often feature people we know and events that recently happened in our lives. Though dreams are frequently so strange and unreal that it's hard to recognize the familiar in them. What does it mean if an animal is an endangered species? There are many organizations in the United States and all over the world that study and research plant and animal species. Determining which ones may be headed for extinction. Any species in such danger is described as endangered. Once a species is endangered, it becomes illegal to hunt that animal or destroy its habitat. In 2001 the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the organization that maintains the nation's list of endangered and threatened plants and animals, listed over 1,000 animals and nearly 750 plants worldwide. Threatened species are those that might soon become endangered. The goal of such organizations is to help a species recover to the point that it no longer needs to be listed as endangered. What causes diarrhea? Diarrhea is simply food that moves through your digestive system too fast. It often occurs when the digestive tract is irritated and inflamed by certain foods. Or by an infection caused by germs, bacteria and viruses. In an effort to rid your body of these irritants or germs quickly. The special muscles of your intestines move food along faster than usual, cutting short the digestive process. Your small intestines may not be able to absorb all the nutrients in your food, then. And that part of food that can't be used solid waste isn't able to stay in your large. Intestines long enough to have its excess moisture removed and returned to your body. That is. 
Why diarrhea is so watery? Because that extra moisture stays in your waist instead of returning to your body. It is important to drink a lot of fluids when you have diarrhea. In addition, it is best to avoid eating solid food for a while. Which will help quiet the hyperactivity of the digestive system. Why do I dream? When you sleep your brain does different things. Most of the time it is quiet, resting with the rest of your body and producing little of the electrical activity seen during waking hours. But every one and one half to two hours, you dream. During dreams, your brain shows the same electrical activity as if you were awake, and your eyes move about very rapidly. That is why this is known as REM sleep, referring to the rapid eye movements. Oddly, during all this brain and eye activity, your body is very still, its muscles limp. Scientists think that this inability to move the body is protective. Keeping people from hurting themselves as they respond to what happens in their dreams. In scientific experiments. Cats were operated on so that their muscles were able to move when they dreamed. Some began to run and even attack imaginary mice while they slept. If you sleep for about 8 hours, you have 4 or 5 dreams during that time. Dreams usually last anywhere from 5 minutes to 30 minutes. So in one night you can spend between half an hour and more than 2 hours dreaming. Why don't girls have penises? In both males and females, urine exits the body through a tube called the urethra. In males, the urethra is located in the penis. A male's urethra is also the pathway through which a fluid called semen passes. Made in the male reproductive organs in the lower abdomen and scrotum, the skin sac attached to the lower abdomen behind the penis. Semen contains the sperm cells that fertilize female egg cells to create babies. Females don't have penises because they don't need them. Their shorter urethra passes through the lower abdomen, expelling urine. Female reproductive organs are all located on the inside of the body, where a baby can safely develop. During sexual intercourse, a man inserts his penis into a woman's vagina. The passageway that leads to the uterus, the structure in which babies grow. Once semen is released, a sperm cell may fertilize the single egg cell that a woman releases each month from one of two ovaries, which are connected to the uterus. If that occurs, a baby eventually develops. Why do I have to wash my hands after I blow my nose? Even when you use a tissue to blow your nose. You may get some of the impurities from inside your nose on your hands. You can keep from spreading germs to others or to surfaces. 
that other people will touch by washing your hands well. That doesn't mean running the tips of your fingers under cold. Water A good hand washing takes 2 minutes in warm, soapy water. Why do bees, wasps, and other insects sting? An insect's sting is a defensive weapon used when it senses danger. It was developed to keep predators away from it or from its colony in a hive or nest. It is designed to pierce the skin and inject a poison or venom into the predator. If you have the bad luck to be stung by an insect, there are a few things you should do. First, move away from the hive or nest if one is nearby. A stinging bee sends out a chemical signal that excites other bees. Second, Try to remove the stinger from your skin by scraping it with something hard instead of pulling it. Which could squeeze the attached venom sac, releasing more of the irritating substance into the wound. Put some ice on the sting to ease the swelling and pain. If you develop a lot of swelling, a rash, or, most important, have trouble breathing. See a doctor, because you are having a serious allergic reaction. Why do bees, wasps, and other insects sting? An insect's sting is a defensive weapon used when it senses danger. It was developed to keep predators away from it or from its colony in a hive or nest. It is designed to pierce the skin and inject a poison or venom into the predator. If you have the bad luck to be stung by an insect, there are a few things you should do. First, Move away from the hive or nest if one is nearby. A stinging bee sends out a chemical signal that excites other bees. Second, try to remove the stinger from your skin by scraping it with something hard instead of pulling it. Which could squeeze the attached venom sac, releasing more of the irritating substance into the wound. Put some ice on the sting to ease the swelling and pain. If you develop a lot of swelling, a rash, or, most important, have trouble breathing. See a doctor, because you are having a serious allergic reaction. What are killer bees? Killer bees are the result of a scientific experiment begun in the mid-1950s, when European honeybees and African bees, which are accustomed to hot temperatures, were brought to Brazil and bred with each other in an effort to create a honeybee that would produce honey in hot, tropical climates. The experiment was a big failure because unlike the mild-mannered, European honeybee the new Africanized honeybee had an aggressive nature. Quick to attack intruders, the new bees have been responsible for a number of human deaths. The danger of these bees comes from their tendency to attack in swarms. If a person is stung by enough bees at one time, it could trigger a severe allergic reaction. 
these killer bees have made their way into the southern United States. But the American beekeeping industry is working on ways to correct this experiment gone wrong. What are killer bees? Killer bees are the result of a scientific experiment begun in the mid-1950s, when European honeybees and African bees, which are accustomed to hot temperatures, were brought to Brazil and bred with each other in an effort to create a honeybee that would produce honey in hot, tropical climates. The experiment was a big failure because unlike the mild-mannered, European honeybee the new Africanized honeybee had an aggressive nature. Quick to attack intruders, the new bees have been responsible for a number of human deaths. The danger of these bees comes from their tendency to attack in swarms. If a person is stung by enough bees at one time, it could trigger a severe allergic reaction. These killer bees have made their way into the southern United States. But the American beekeeping industry is working on ways to correct this experiment gone wrong. Why do yellow jacket wasps bother picnickers? Yellow jacket wasps only appear at picnics in the late summer and fall. When there is less work for them to do in their colonies. The nectar producing flowers that they usually feed on are almost gone at that. Time of year so they settle for sweet things like soda and other picnic food. Why do yellow jacket wasps bother picnickers? Yellow jacket wasps only appear at picnics in the late summer and fall. When there is less work for them to do in their colonies. The nectar producing flowers that they usually feed on are almost gone at that. Time of year so they settle for sweet things like soda and other picnic food. Why do bees and other insects buzz? The buzzing sounds that insects make are the beating of their wings. Some insects flap their wings slowly, like the butterfly, 8 to 12 beats per second, and make no sound. Others, like the mosquito, beat their wings very fast. At 600 beats per second. The mosquito's buzz sounds more like a high-pitched whine. Why do bees and other insects buzz? The buzzing sounds that insects make are the beating of their wings. Some insects flap their wings slowly, like the butterfly, 8 to 12 beats per second, and make no sound. Others, like the mosquito, beat their wings very fast. At 600 beats per second. 
The mosquito's buzz sounds more like a high-pitched whine. How do insects make other sounds? Most of the time, insects make noise for mating purposes. Male insects produce sound to attract females, sometimes over long distances. A male insect can make such sounds by rubbing parts of his body together. The grasshopper, for instance, rubs the rough edge of his hind leg against the edge of a forewing. Similarly, the cricket scrapes his forewings together. Other insects have membranes that vibrate, which also produces sound. How do insects make other sounds? Most of the time, insects make noise for mating purposes. Male insects produce sound to attract females, sometimes over long distances. A male insect can make such sounds by rubbing parts of his body together. The grasshopper, for instance, rubs the rough edge of his hind leg against the edge of a forewing. Similarly, the cricket scrapes his forewings together. Other insects have membranes that vibrate, which also produces sound. Can you figure out the temperature by listening to a cricket chirp? Yes, the warmer the night, the faster a cricket sings. This phenomenon is so reliable that a mathematical equation can be used to calculate air temperature. Count the number of cricket chirps made in 13 seconds. And add 40, and you will get the temperature outside, in degrees Fahrenheit. Can you figure out the temperature by listening to a cricket chirp? Yes, the warmer the night, the faster a cricket sings. This phenomenon is so reliable that a mathematical equation can be used to calculate air temperature. Count the number of cricket chirps made in 13 seconds. And add 40, and you will get the temperature outside, in degrees Fahrenheit. Why do fireflies light up at night? It is believed that fireflies, beetles also known as lightning bugs, flash signals to one another to show their locations in the dark and to indicate their willingness to mate. Fireflies have organs near the ends of their bodies that convert a special biochemical into flashes of heatless light. This ability of living things to produce their own light is called bioluminescence. Why do fireflies light up at night? It is believed that fireflies, 
beetles also known as lightning bugs. Flash signals to one another to show their locations in the dark and to indicate their willingness to mate. Fireflies have organs near the ends of their bodies that convert a special biochemical into flashes of heatless light. This ability of living things to produce their own light is called bioluminescence. Why do butterflies and other insects fly from flower to flower? Butterflies and other insects fly from one plant to the next to feed on the sweet nectar and sometimes the pollen located in the interior of flowers. The sugar in nectar supplies insects with the energy they need. And pollen contains protein, fat, vitamins, and minerals. In the process of feeding, Many insects transfer pollen which sticks to their bodies from one plant's flower to another. Pollen, which is a fine powdery grain from a flower's male reproductive organ, must be transferred to the female reproductive organ of a flower for fertilization to take place and seeds to form. Why do butterflies and other insects fly from flower to flower? Butterflies and other insects fly from one plant to the next to feed on the sweet nectar and sometimes the pollen located in the interior of flowers. The sugar in nectar supplies insects with the energy they need. And pollen contains protein, fat, vitamins, and minerals. In the process of feeding, many insects transfer pollen which sticks to their bodies from one plant's flower to another. Pollen which is a fine powdery grain from a flower's male reproductive organ, must be transferred to the female reproductive organ of a flower for fertilization to take place and seeds to form. How are moths different from butterflies? While moths and butterflies are very similar and belong to the same order of insects. Lepidoptera, there are noticeable differences between them. Butterflies are generally active during the day, and moths are usually nocturnal, or active at night. Butterflies have knobs on the ends of their antennae, while moths do not. Butterflies tend to be more colorful than moths. And moths and butterflies hold their wings differently when at rest, moths lay theirs out flat. Like an airplane, while butterflies hold theirs vertically above their bodies. How are moths different from butterflies? While moths and butterflies are very similar and belong to the same order of insects. Lepidoptera, there are noticeable differences between them. Butterflies are generally active during the day, and moths are usually nocturnal, or active at night. 
butterflies have knobs on the ends of their antennae, while moths do not. Butterflies tend to be more colorful than moths. And moths and butterflies hold their wings differently when at rest, moths lay theirs out flat. Like an airplane, while butterflies hold theirs vertically above their bodies. What is a cocoon? A cocoon is an envelope-like structure made of silk that is spun by an immature insect or larva. It is a protective covering in which the larva passes through. It's an active pupa stage before it becomes an adult insect. These cocoons are often attached to branches or twigs. Caterpillars are the larva that eventually change or metamorphose, into butterflies and moths. Only a few types of butterfly caterpillars spin cocoons. A butterfly's cocoon is called a chrysalis, while the caterpillars of many moths do. The cocoon of the silkworm, caterpillar of the silk moth, is collected and processed and woven into the beautiful cloth we know as silk. What is a cocoon? A cocoon is an envelope-like structure made of silk that is spun by an immature insect or larva. It is a protective covering in which the larva passes through. It's an active pupa stage before it becomes an adult insect. These cocoons are often attached to branches or twigs. Caterpillars are the larva that eventually change, or metamorphose, into butterflies and moths. Only a few types of butterfly caterpillars spin cocoons. A butterfly's cocoon is called a chrysalis, while the caterpillars of many moths do. The cocoon of the silkworm, caterpillar of the silk moth, is collected and processed and woven into the beautiful cloth we know as silk. Why are some flying insects drawn to lights at night? Scientists aren't exactly sure why this happens. They have noticed that on clear nights, when the moon is visible, fewer insects gravitate to artificial lights. This observation has given rise to a theory, for millions of years. Insects have used the light of the moon, coming from one direction above to guide them during night flight. But artificial lights, which put out rays of illumination in all directions, confuse this ancient navigational system. Flying in a straight line is impossible when an insect is around an artificial light, which causes it to fly in circles. Why are some flying insects drawn to lights at night? Scientists aren't exactly sure why this happens. They have noticed that on clear nights, when the moon is visible, fewer insects gravitate to artificial lights. 
This observation has given rise to a theory, for millions of years. Insects have used the light of the moon, coming from one direction above to guide them during night flight. But artificial lights, which put out rays of illumination in all directions, confuse this ancient navigational system. Flying in a straight line is impossible when an insect is around an artificial light, which causes it to fly in circles. Where do insects go in the winter? Most insects survive the winter in an inactive state known as diapause. It is a type of hibernation. In which all body processes slow down and little energy is required for survival. A few types of insects, like the monarch butterfly of North America, migrate to a warmer place just like many birds to spend the winter, returning in the spring. Where do insects go in the winter? Most insects survive the winter in an inactive state known as diapause. It is a type of hibernation. In which all body processes slow down and little energy is required for survival. A few types of insects, like the monarch butterfly of North America, migrate to a warmer place just like many birds to spend the winter, returning in the spring. Which animal is the most intelligent? Ask five scientists to list the most intelligent animals, and you'll get five different lists. Most experts believe that humans are the most evolved, complex, intelligent animals, but there are some people who question this. Part of the problem in determining the most intelligent animals is that there are several different kinds of intelligence, the ability to communicate, to adapt to the environment and to solve problems. And scientists have always struggled to learn how. An animal's mind works when communication between animals and humans is so limited. Many studies have shown that primates are the most intelligent animals. The primate family includes human beings as well as chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, baboons, gibbons and monkeys, those animals, with chimps at the top of the list, hold the top six spots on biologist Edward O. Wilson's list of the ten most intelligent animals aside from humans. Primates have large, complex brains. And they can build complicated cultures and, to some degree, control their environment. They can communicate with others of their species and develop language skills. Several marine animals, including the killer whale and many dolphin species, have been listed as some of the most intelligent animals on the planet. Elephants and pigs are also believed to be highly intelligent. What is throw up?
throw up, or vomit, is partly digested food that has come back up forcefully through your mouth. Vomiting usually happens when the stomach is irritated by certain foods or by an infection caused by germs, bacteria and viruses. The quickest way for your body to get rid of the irritants or germs in your stomach is to vomit them out. Your brain tells the muscles in your stomach walls to spasm, contract abnormally. It also tells your diaphragm the large sheet of muscles that separates your chest from your abdomen and is most responsible for your breathing to press downward on your stomach. These activities combine to force the contents of your stomach up and out. Other conditions can cause nausea that bad feeling in your Stomach before you throw up and bring on vomiting, too. Smelling a terrible odor, undergoing a frightening experience, or even, for some people. Riding in a moving vehicle, called motion sickness, are some of the things that can send signals to the vomit center of the brain. Which tells the stomach to empty itself to feel better. What are killer bees? Killer bees are the result of a scientific experiment begun in the mid-1950s, when European honeybees and African bees, which are accustomed to hot temperatures, were brought to Brazil and bred with each other in an effort to create a honeybee that would produce honey in hot, tropical climates. The experiment was a big failure because unlike the mild-mannered European honeybee the new Africanized honeybee had an aggressive nature. Quick to attack intruders, the new bees have been responsible for a number of human deaths. The danger of these bees comes from their tendency to attack in swarms. If a person is stung by enough bees at one time, it could trigger a severe allergic reaction. These killer bees have made their way into the southern United States. But the American beekeeping industry is working on ways to correct this experiment gone wrong. Why do bees and other insects buzz? The buzzing sounds that insects make are the beating of their wings. Some insects flap their wings slowly, like the butterfly, 8 to 12 beats per second, and make no sound. Others, like the mosquito, beat their wings very fast. At 600 beats per second. The mosquito's buzz sounds more like a high-pitched whine. What are predators and prey? A seal swims through cold ocean waters in search of a meal. He spots a nearby fish, swims to it, and eats it. In that situation, the seal is the predator, an animal that hunts down and eats another animal for food. The fish, on the other hand, is the prey, an animal that is hunted as a food source by another animal. In the ever-shifting world of the animal kingdom, however, an animal that is a predator in one situation could be the prey in another.
the fish-eating seal, for example, might later find itself the intended prey of a hunting polar bear. While it may seem harsh and cruel, and it's always difficult to watch on television nature shows. Animals hunting one another is a natural and necessary process. Animals don't hunt other animals for sport they do so because they need to eat in order to survive. All living things depend on each other for survival many animals, herbivores. Need to eat plants, other animals, carnivores, need to eat those plant eating animals. And some animals, called omnivores, eat both plants and meat. The waste produced by animals, as well as the nutrients that result when an animal's body decomposes or breaks down, after death, enriches the soil, providing necessary ingredients for plants to thrive. An animal that primarily eats the leaves of a certain tree, or that requires that tree to make its home. Would have trouble surviving if all of those trees were destroyed. And if that animal cannot survive, its predators cannot survive, and such struggles for survival echo all the way up the food chain. What is the largest animal in the world? The largest animal in the world is the blue whale. It can reach a length of 110 feet, 33.5 meters, and weigh more than 150 tons, 300,000 pounds. Its head makes up nearly one quarter of its body, and its heart is the size of a small car. It is thought to be the largest animal that has ever lived, bigger than the largest dinosaur. Even a baby blue whale is bigger than an elephant, which is the largest land animal. The are two types of whales, toothed whales, which use their teeth to catch fish and squid. That they usually swallow whole, and baleen whales, which are toothless. But have sheets of a horny substance called baleen attached to their upper jaws. The baleen works like a giant strainer. Letting water including tiny plant and animal life called plankton move back and forth through it. Loads of plankton are trapped behind the baleen and then swallowed. The blue whale is an example of a baleen whale. Which means that the largest creature in the world feeds on some of the smallest plants and animals that exist. What is spit? Your mouth is kept moist and clean by a watery liquid called saliva, or spit. Which is made by pairs of salivary glands located under your jaw, in front of your ears, and under your tongue. Saliva mixes with food as you chew, softening it so that it can be more easily swallowed. In addition, Saliva starts the digestive process because it contains an enzyme or chemical that changes the starch in food into sugar. The production of saliva increases when food is in the mouth or even with the sight and smell of good food hence the use of the word mouth watering to describe delicious or fragrant meals.
How do the things that I eat and drink keep from going down my windpipe? When you eat and drink, chewed food and liquids travel toward the back of your throat. Muscles there automatically close the passageway to your nose, so that your food and drink doesn't take a wrong turn. Though some people can force liquid through these muscles, making it spout from their noses. More muscles make the epiglottis, a flap at the top of your windpipe. Or trachea, automatically close so that food can't get into your lungs. Your food and drink then have a clear pathway down your esophagus. A muscular tube that runs from your throat to your stomach. Sometimes, a trickle of liquid, from a drink, or from saliva in your mouth. Passes into your windpipe before the epiglottis can close it. When that happens you feel like you're choking, and you cough and cough to expel the fluid from your lungs. It is said that what you swallowed went down the wrong pipe, and that's exactly what happened. Some liquid went down your windpipe instead of your food pipe. When food gets stuck in the trachea, though, more serious choking can occur. That food can partially or fully block the windpipe. Leading to breathing problems. If the windpipe is partially blocked, a person may still be able to take in enough air to cough out, which will usually remove the piece of food. Remember, as scary and violent as coughing is, it is a good sign during choking. Indicating the trachea is not completely blocked. When a person cannot cough, though, and holds his or her neck, that individual needs help. The Heimlich maneuver, named after the doctor who invented it. Is a method of dislodging a piece of food from a choker's throat by reaching your arms around the person's body from behind and squeezing your fists up into his or her abdomen. The practice has saved many lives. Why do I feel thirsty? When your body is low on water, or dehydrated, the moist lining of your mouth and throat become dry. Thirst sensors there send a message to your brain, which tells you to drink at once. About three-fourths of the human body is made of fluids. And the average adult must take in about two and one-half quarts, about two and one-half liters, of water. And other healthy beverages, like fruit juice, every day to remain healthy. Though some of the fluids we need also come from solid foods, which contain large amounts of water. Sometimes you may feel thirsty even when your body isn't dehydrated, things like dry. Dusty air or salty food can draw moisture from your mouth and throat, alerting your thirst sensors. To demonstrate this, try swallowing dry crackers without taking a drink. Why does my stomach growl when I'm hungry? Your body changes food into substances it can use for energy. When your body is low on food, it cannot make the energy it needs. 
your brain and nervous system go into action then. Making the muscles of your stomach walls squeeze together in order to digest food food that isn't there. The actions of your stomach make you feel hungry. Ensuring that you will seek out some food to eat that will soon be on its way to your stomach. In the meantime, though, gases and digestive juices in your empty stomach churn around, and you may hear growls. Scientists have a name for the rumblings in the digestive system that are caused by moving gas. Borborygmi, pronounced borborygmi, a word that sounds a lot like the noises your stomach makes when it's empty. What are some of the smallest animals in the world? Some people consider protozoa, which are a type of single celled organisms including amoebas. Part of the animal kingdom. According to that classification, the microscopic protozoa would be the smallest animals. But many classification systems place protozoa in their own kingdom called protista. A group separate from the animal kingdom. Several types of insects are nearly microscopic, measuring only a fraction of a millimeter in length. The smallest mammals are considerably larger than that, Commer Sun's dolphin. Weighing around 50 to 70 pounds, 23 to 32 kilograms, is the smallest sea mammal. A bat that is about the same size as a bumblebee. Called Kitty's hognosed bat, may be the smallest land mammal. It is only about an inch long, 29 to 33 millimeters, and weighs around 0.07 ounces, 2 grams. How are moths different from butterflies? While moths and butterflies are very similar and belong to the same order of insects. Lepidoptera, there are noticeable differences between them. Butterflies are generally active during the day, and moths are usually nocturnal, or active at night. Butterflies have knobs on the ends of their antennae, while moths do not. Butterflies tend to be more colorful than moths. And moths and butterflies hold their wings differently when at rest, moths lay theirs out flat. Like an airplane, while butterflies hold theirs vertically above their bodies. What is hibernation? During the coldest winter months, some animals migrate. Traveling hundreds or even thousands of miles to a warmer climate. Others stay in their wintry homes, preparing for the cold by putting on extra fat. Stockpiling food, and creating cozy dens where they will be protected from wind and snow. A few animals survive freezing temperatures by slowing everything down their breathing. Heart rate, body movements, and entering into a dormant, or inactive, state called hibernation. Animals that are true hibernators lower their body temperatures close to the freezing point. 
32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius, and spend the winter in a state close to death. They cannot be easily wakened, and they don't appear to be breathing at all. In fact, they breathe a few times a minute. Among mammals, true hibernators include some types of bats, some rodents, like squirrels, and hedgehogs. These animals will wake up from their dormant state every few weeks to eat something. And then they return to hibernation. Bears and many other large animals are not true hibernators, they do spend much of the winter sleeping. But their body temperatures don't lower much, and they can be awakened easily. The summer version of hibernation experienced by some animals that live in extremely hot. Dry desert regions is called estivation. Why do I have to eat? Food and drink provide the energy that your body needs to function and the materials required for growth and repair. People can't live without food and drink for very long. A healthy diet requires a certain amount of six different substances. Proteins, carbohydrates, fats, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. In addition, water is required to keep body processes running smoothly. Proteins, found in meat, fish, eggs, dairy products, peas, beans, and grains, are required for the repair, replacement, and growth of body tissue. Carbohydrates, found in bread, pasta, potatoes, and cereals, are good sources of quick energy for the body. Fats, found in many animal and plant foods, like meat, eggs, and nuts, also provide the body with energy and are sometimes used for growth and repair. Vitamins are chemicals that the body needs to function well. Minerals are metals and salts that the body also needs in tiny amounts to run. Different foods, like vegetables, contain different amounts of vitamins and minerals. So it is important to have variety in your diet so you can get a good balance. Fiber or roughage, parts of plant foods that the body can't digest is important for the proper working of the digestive system. It provides the bulk that digestive muscles need to grip. Onto as they push food along and carry away body waste. Water is also a very important part of a healthy diet. An adult's body loses about 4 pints, 2 liters, of water every day through urine. Bowel movements, sweat, and the moisture in exhaled breath. Those fluids need to be replaced by drinking water, or other healthy beverages. And eating food, water makes up about 70% of the food we eat. An individual can survive weeks without food but only 4 or 5 days without vital water. Why do fireflies light up at night? It is believed that fireflies, beetles also known as lightning bugs, 
flash signals to one another to show their locations in the dark and to indicate their willingness to mate. Fireflies have organs near the ends of their bodies that convert a special biochemical into flashes of heatless light. This ability of living things to produce their own light is called bioluminescence. Why do yellow jacket wasps bother picnickers? Yellow jacket wasps only appear at picnics in the late summer and fall. When there is less work for them to do in their colonies. The nectar producing flowers that they usually feed on are almost gone at that. Time of year so they settle for sweet things like soda and other picnic food. Which animal is the fastest? The cheetah clocked at speeds of 70 miles, 112 kilometers, per hour is the fastest animal on land. Cheetah's bodies, with their small heads, long legs and ridged foot pads that give them extra traction, are designed especially for speed. Humans, by the way, have been known to travel short distances as fast as 28 miles 45 kilometers per hour. Measuring speed in sea animals is very difficult, but studies have shown that the sailfish is the fastest creature in the sea. Swimming at speeds up to 68 miles, 109 kilometers, per hour. The fastest animal in the air is the peregrine falcon. When flying horizontally, the peregrine falcon can go around 60 miles, 97 kilometers, per hour. It is during its high-speed dives for prey that this bird breaks speed records, however. Flying at a speed of more than 200 miles, 322 kilometers, per hour. The peregrine falcon frequently kills its prey just by the force of impact. Which animal is the deadliest? The poison dart frog, found in the rainforests of the South American country Colombia, produces one of the most toxic poisons in the animal kingdom. Many amphibians, the animal group to which frogs belong, produce toxins that make their skin taste bad so predators won't want to eat them. Some frogs, usually the brightly colored ones. Produce poisonous secretions that can harm or even kill their enemies. The toxin made by the poison dart frog, if it enters an animal's bloodstream, can paralyze and even kill. There are many different types of these frogs, the most poisonous being a bright yellow. Frog whose toxin can kill a human if it gets into the person's mouth or into an open wound. The toxin can even work its way through unbroken skin. As little as one drop of this frog's poison can cause the heart to stop beating. Certain tribes in Colombia use the poison dart frog secretions. Obtained without killing the frogs, to coat their darts and arrows, hence the name given to the frog.
Which animal has the longest life? The animal believed to have had the longest lifespan ever. Recorded was a Marian's tortoise that lived over 152 years. Several other types of tortoises have been known to live longer than 115 years. Clams also tend to live a very long time, with a quahog, pronounced kaohog. Living around 150 years and a deep sea clam living around 100 years. The oldest person on record lived 122 years. What is a cocoon? A cocoon is an envelope-like structure made of silk that is spun by an immature insect or larva. It is a protective covering in which the larva passes through. It's an active pupa stage before it becomes an adult insect. These cocoons are often attached to branches or twigs. Caterpillars are the larvae that eventually change, or metamorphose, into butterflies and moths. Only a few types of butterfly caterpillars spin cocoons. A butterfly's cocoon is called a chrysalis, while the caterpillars of many moths do. The cocoon of the silkworm, caterpillar of the silk moth, is collected and processed and woven into the beautiful cloth we know as silk. Why do people say that they feel like they have butterflies in their stomachs then? That's just a phrase that describes the fluttery feeling like the beating of delicate butterfly wings that some people get in their stomachs when they're nervous or excited. Why does some gas smell worse than others? The gas expelled from our intestines actually contains many different kinds of gases. Including nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide, and methane. When high concentrations of the sulfur-containing gas hydrogen sulfide are present, your gas has a particularly strong odor. Certain foods, like beans, cabbage, and eggs, contain a lot of sulfur and can result in this smelly gas. Where do insects go in the winter? Most insects survive the winter in an inactive state known as diapause. It is a type of hibernation. In which all body processes slow down and little energy is required for survival. A few types of insects, like the monarch butterfly of North America, migrate to a warmer place just like many birds to spend the winter, returning in the spring. Why do bees, wasps, and other insects sting?
An insect's sting is a defensive weapon used when it senses danger. It was developed to keep predators away from it or from its colony in a hive or nest. It is designed to pierce the skin and inject a poison or venom into the predator. If you have the bad luck to be stung by an insect, there are a few things you should do. First, move away from the hive or nest if one is nearby. A stinging bee sends out a chemical signal that excites other bees. Second, try to remove the stinger from your skin by scraping it with something hard instead of pulling it. Which could squeeze the attached venom sac, releasing more of the irritating substance into the wound. Put some ice on the sting to ease the swelling and pain. If you develop a lot of swelling, a rash, or, most important, have trouble breathing. See a doctor, because you are having a serious allergic reaction. What is a food chain? Each animal in a predator-prey situation is a link in a food chain. Which is a way of looking at the relationships among plants and animals that guarantee the survival of all. Every food chain begins with the sun, which provides the energy that makes plant life possible. The next link in the chain is a plant, which passes on the energy of the sun when it is eaten by the next link in the chain, a mouse, let's say. Which passes energy on once again when it is eaten by the next link, a fox, perhaps, and so on. Because most plant-eating animals and most meat-eating animals have more than one food source. Many scientists look at the relationships among them as a food web, rather than a food chain. A diagram showing a food web indicates the variety of foods eaten by a rabbit as well as the many different predators for whom a rabbit is prey. <laughs>